Welcome to Category 5 Technology TV. What you're about to experience is a free, worldwide, interactive broadcast from Ontario, Canada. We broadcast live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Get your questions in. Join the community chat room at www.category5.tv or email us at live at category5.tv. And now, let's begin. Here's your host, Robbie Ferguson. Welcome to episode number 202 of Category 5 Technology TV. It's Tuesday, August the 2nd, 2011, and I am on location at Silver Beach Developments with my friend Jerry Kowalski. Jerry, it's nice to see you. Thank you, Robbie. Yeah. Pleasure to have you, you here in Halliburton. Yeah. Cheers. How do, you uh, like the, how do you like the beauty of Halliburton? Oh, I don't know how you get anything done, honestly, <laughs> because it, all I want to do is relax, just kick, kick back. It do is. the locals actually work? I guess you have oh, to. Occasionally. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's hard just sometimes. It's so nice it's, up here. Uh, yeah, Halliburton is uh, is one of the most beautiful areas in Ontario. It's uh, just west, or just east, I should say, of the Muskokas. It, 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 Muskoka and Halliburton comprise the most prestigious part of cottage country that we have here in Ontario. And uh, we're very fortunate that uh, we're able to live and work here. And uh, that has been my goal now for a couple of years, uh, a couple more than a couple of years. Um, to build Silver Beach. Silver Beach is a, a new lifestyle development. Uh, it's a lakeside condo development. We're right on the lake. We have all of the best of the amenities that you could ask for in cottage country. We it's have beautiful. We have a beautiful sand beach. We have boat docks. Uh, we have a golf course directly adjacent to us that we're connected uh, connected directly to the golf course, uh, and that's uh, the Pine Stone, beautiful Pine Stone Resort mm. and uh, 18 Hole Championship Golf Club. We're five minutes from town. We have great shopping, great boutiques. Uh, it's just a wonderful place to live. Let's talk about uh, about Silver Beach um, in general in just a moment. Before we do, I'll, I'll just let you know what's coming up in the news. Uh, tonight, we're going to be looking at uh, how Spotify is, uh, is actually being sued just two weeks after uh, they went live in the U.S. Also, hackers have stolen personal details for 35 million accounts in South Korea and they're blaming Chinese hackers. The sub $200 EPC, uh, that's a, an EPC for under $200, is now officially a reality. Stick around, I'm gonna be telling you all about that. As well, uh, with the release of uh, Mac OS Lion, uh, there is a seven-year-old exploit, which is still there, which allows hackers to gain access to your password data simply by plugging a cable into your computer and using some software. So stick around, we're going to have the full stories for you in just a few minutes' time. And Jerry, of course, it's great to, uh, to be here at Silver Beach. It's just a beautiful development that you have here. Um, we'll talk all about what, what, it, what it is and what, uh, where you kind of grew from, which I think is, is really what makes Silver Beach so interesting. Um, but uh, I welcome everybody to join us in the chat room. Jerry's actually bringing up the chat room as well on, uh, on his computer over here. Have you used a chat room before? Uh, yes, I have. Yeah? Okay. You, you were a little tentative as far well, as I, I don't spend up. a lot of time on it. I keep pretty busy on the development side, so yeah, I don't yeah. spend a lot of time chatting, but uh, I have, and uh, I'll do my best. I apologize in advance if I'm not a, an expert <laughs> on it, but I'll do my best to answer And I'll questions. say the same. It's like if, if, if I can't... We're broadcasting live here from Halliburton County tonight, so it's uh, it's wonderful, and, and Jerry's been great to uh, to have Category 5 uh, here at the at the model home and uh, great internet connection, which we're going to be talking about as well. Yeah, that's uh, part, of the, part of the technology package that comes here uh, with these new homes is mm -hmm. uh, our internet, and we're going to talk about that a little later. Fantastic. But, uh, I just want to, again, welcome you, Robbie, and I think your, your viewers, we've set ourselves up in the model home, so we're in the great room of the model home looking out, and just behind us, I think you'll probably be able to see uh, beautiful Lake Cachaga Wigamog. Uh, it's a 16 mile long lake here in Halliburton. It's one of a five lake chain. It's the only five lake chain in the whole area. Uh, there's about 30 miles of boating, fishing, good fishing. There's lake trout, there's uh, pickerel, bass. Uh, the lakes are, are stocked and just ready for you to come and fish them. <laughs> I go right back to how do you get any work done? Yeah. Want to you know, just be out on the boat or yeah. swimming or snorkeling or yeah. whatever you want to do out there. But just a beautiful area for it sure. Is, it is and what we've tried to do is to combine an urban feel mm -hmm. with that cottage country 
uh, experience. Yeah, I can see that. I can see that with the yeah. fireplaces and the yeah. big screen TVs. Yeah. And the homes are all very technologically advanced, but they're also uh, exterior-wise, they still have that cottage feel. Uh, mm. Our building materials are all uh, stone, uh, natural wood. It's a 50-year Fraser wood siding product. Yeah and uh, fiberglass shingles with lots of bright windows and open spaces as you can see behind us. Uh, you can't probably see the whole thing but this is an 18 foot window wall up behind us here and a lot of our homes incorporate window walls and large windows so we let lots of natural light into the homes and uh, it just gives them that open cottage feel, that, that uh, healthy feel looking out to nature. We also, um, we also being located just five minutes outside of the town we offer uh, a unique experience of living in cottage country because as I said we're bringing that that urban style into cottage mm -hmm. country where we have that cottage country ambiance so it's a very unique product in the fact that it's not just uh, it's not just a home uh, it's not just a place to live this is actually a whole lifestyle the whole the idea and and you keep saying it how do you get any work done <laughs> it's a lifestyle that you uh, that you, you just become to love you've got so much nature around you we have we have wild animals. We have deer and I've seen fox. Three deer. Yeah, I've never seen a, a right. real life deer out of captivity yeah, in my life. Really, I've seen three. Oh, they they uh, they come regularly down in the morning and have their breakfast in the, in our gardens and and uh, it's it's just a, a a wonderful experience living here year round. And that's what we're offering, and that's what we're you know we're hoping. And, and Robbie has been uh, uh, very gracious in offering. Uh, this opportunity for his viewers to have a look at this type of an experience, this type of a lifestyle experience, and I very, I very much appreciate the opportunity to talk to all of you. Uh, and I see I've got a couple of, uh, of uh, uh, chats already, a couple of postings on the chat room welcoming me, and thank you everybody for that. But I won't take the time to type them out. But thank you. And uh, so we've, as I say, we've got a, a unique housing experience here. We've got homes. Now I'm sure everyone's asking the 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 $64,000 question, how much? And right. this is where it gets really good. Uh, we build brand new year-round homes here full of technology starting at $299,000. So you can have a year-round right. year home. You can use it as a, as a year-round residence, which a lot of people do. We also mm -hmm. have a lot of people here, Robbie, that uh, use it as a recreational experience. They come up on weekends, they have their place in, in a more urban environment, they have their careers, and this is their getaway. Right. This is a no-maintenance getaway. We market mm -hmm. this as the new style of cottage country living. Um, they don't have to come to the cottage and start cutting grass, fixing the roof, <laughs> fixing the deck. Right. They land here on a Friday evening and they just put their feet up and they relax. They enjoy. They, they enjoy the surroundings, they go boating, they go swimming. They visit with their neighbors. Uh, we've got a beautiful social community here, uh, part of which will include a, a, a large clubhouse. Uh, it'll be a central gathering area with an exercise facility, a games room, wow. uh, I didn't health know that. and wellness area. Yeah, it's uh, that's scheduled to be built um, when we're about 50% complete, and we're right now 33% complete. We're one third built. So, uh, how many houses are available right now? Uh, well, the whole community consists of 59 homes. Mm -hmm. uh, there's 23 townhomes and 36 detached homes. And currently we have 20 uh, of those 59 built. So right. we're, now, uh, we're now just over one third complete. So people so can come in and see the model home, it's, take it's, a look around. Uh, it's here, it's now. It's, it's not like it's something that's off in the future. Silver Beach is actually here. Mm -hmm. And we have 16 residents already living here on site. It seems to me like driving in, um, it's it's almost it seems like a community, yeah. kind of set back from the lake and yeah and yeah that's we're really uh, we're a lakeside community. We have a shared beach. We also have uh, boat uh, private boat docks. Uh, right. We've got approximately one dock for every two units in the development, which is just about right because it's about, about how many half people the own people boat. own boats. Right. Yeah. Well, that's good. So we have boat docks that are available as well. Uh, again, we, we stress environmentally friendly because we are very big proponents of looking after our, the quality of our lakes. So all of our docks are, uh, it's called an easy dock system. Uh, it's got a 40 year life expectancy, it's UV resistant, uh, it's all made of polyethylene. There's no, it's a floating dock system that's very stable and very rigid. And uh, 
and it doesn't cause any damage to the lake. There's no leaching of iodines or creosotes or anything out of the wood. So it's, it's a very, uh, very stable, long-lasting, environmentally friendly product. That's great. And that's... And uh, you really have to be eco-minded living in an area like this, I would think. Well, but again, that's part of what we've had to experience right from the word go. Yeah. Uh, I bought this property in 2004, mm -hmm. and it took five years before we were even able to start to build. And that was just to be able to get all of the environmental uh, procedures, all of the studies, uh, all of the cultural, uh, archaeological uh, ministries of, of environment, uh, water treatment, permits right. to take water. Mm -hmm. uh, water is something that is very important when you're living in a community and I'm very happy to say that we have a fabulous property here with two, uh, two wells that produce lots wow. of fresh clean water. Great. And uh, we have even built a water treatment plant that right here on premise. On premise, we have our own private water treatment plant that compares to a, a, a water treatment plant that you would have in any uh, municipal town. <laughs> the the treatment system uh, came in at uh, several hundred thousand dollars of cost, and that and that's been built. We built that just for our 59 residents, so you can be guaranteed that you have great water. Again, the environmental side of it. Uh, we we're fortunate enough to be located close enough to town that we are actually on municipal sewers. So we're one of the few oh, right. areas. So you get there's the no best septics, of both worlds, no really. septics here, no septics. Wow. So we have no impact uh, on the lake quality, on the water quality of the lake. Uh, we're on municipal sewer system. Everything goes into the wastewater treatment plant in Halliburton. Fantastic. Uh, before we move on, I'll just mention that this episode of Category 5 TV is brought to you in part by the P-Touch 1090 from Brother.ca. Make sure you visit Brother.ca and check out the P-Touch 1090. This is a great device for labeling your stuff. Uh, it also does some graphics and it's a lot more sophisticated than just the basic uh, tape labeler. And when you are labeling, you are going to need some batteries. Uh, this show is brought to you by Eco Alkalines Batteries. Find out more at EcoAlkalines.com. We we're talking about environmental friendliness. Um, these batteries are eco-friendly you know, to the point of landfill safe. So really uh, something that I would encourage you to check out. These are available uh, all around the world. Visit their website, ecoalkalines.com, and find a dealer near you. And if you don't see one, pop them an email. Let them know that uh, you heard of them on Category 5 and that you're interested in finding out more about their batteries. Also, of course, Category 5 TV tonight is being broadcast from Silver Beach Developments, and you'll find them online, silverbeachdevelopments.com. I would encourage you to check out Jerry's website there uh, with Silver Beach and find out more about uh, what it is that they do here and, and the, the beautiful homes that they're offering uh, right here uh, in Halliburton. If you have any questions uh, for us, make sure you post a question in the chat room, category5.tv. And I'll just try to uh, keep a quick look on the uh, on the chat room here. General uh, question in the chat room from Sammy says, just wondering uh, the general climate here as far as temperatures go. And um, Sammy, I'm I'm not sure if you're familiar with the Toronto. Uh, not sure where you're located, but we're just located about two hours uh, northeast of Toronto of the GTA, and uh, our climate is very similar to uh, what's what you get in southern Ontario. We are still considered, even though we're considered central Ontario, we're, we're, we get the same climates as southern Ontario, with the exception of maybe a couple of degrees. We're usually a couple of degrees cooler uh, in the summertime, a couple of degrees cooler in the wintertime. We do get more snow uh, depending on the year. Last year there was more snow to the south of us than there was here. We had very little snow uh, last winter. Uh, until near the end of the year we got a big dumping in March but other mm. than that we didn't have a, a hard winter at all so the climate is very friendly the to to all types of sporting uh, activities recreational activities there's uh, there's downhill ski hills up here there's one of the largest Nordic ski trails in all of Ontario the Halliburton mm. Nordic trail system for cross-country skiing is right here at our doorstep uh, ice fishing snowmobile trails, the main top trail B runs right through our backyard. Wow. Uh, so uh, snowmobiling, you can jump right on the trail right from home and uh, go. Uh, a lot of so, talk about winter activities and summer, so the first thing that yeah. comes to mind as we're talking about winter is uh, how is the maintenance as far as road maintenance and, and getting in and out? Oh, we're, we're just located uh, 
seven kilometers outside the village of Halliburton. So it's all good year-round roads. They're fully maintained. They have the roads crew have all the equipment to look after everything. And within our condominium, uh, we have uh, wonderful contractors who keep our roads completely clean and sanded if necessary. Oh, mm -hmm. So everything is full year-round access, easy living. It's not. Uh, Climate is not a difficult thing for us to deal with at all. And of course, in the summer, as you can see by just looking at the oh. lake, it is beautiful up here in the summertime. We I'm, have, I'm working on my farmer's tan, as they say. Well, I've got <laughs> one of those going myself. Yeah. But, so. um, as, far as, uh, as far as weather goes, it's a it's favorable climate for all kinds of recreation. It's a year-round recreational experience, cultural experience. There's lots of... Uh, uh, theater groups and and theaters. Yeah, we're seeing that on the way over. There's a theater just yeah, on the way that yeah, advertises. Yeah, that we've, we've got, got a on we've and... got a tremendous theater uh, located right in the high school. It's a professional mm -hmm. theater, and wow. uh, they they have shows uh, every night of the week all summer long. And I'm here just you know for this one week window, but we've experienced Midnight Madness, yeah. which is just a. a an awesome time to just yeah. browse the street of, of Halliburton. Yeah. And, they and tomorrow, close again, it down. tomorrow again, tomorrow night, the streets close down and the Rotary yeah. Carnival is on all uh, all day tomorrow. And it's a good layout in town because it's easy to get around. You yeah. say the street is closed down, you think, oh, well, how, how are you supposed to get through? It Basically, there's two parallel roads and it, and it lets yeah, you and right around. Yeah, there's another one so. up in behind it too. So Perfect. There's, there's, there's easy access. So, um, just so that great to community. say, like Halliburton to, to me, just coming to travel and, and, and be here for the cottage and things is, is there's always something going on. It's, it's just a, a great community, it nice is. people. Yeah, tremendous community. And that's, uh, and that's again how we fit in as a, as a housing development because we are actually the only uh, development being built in Halliburton currently. Okay. There is nothing else to compare to what we're doing because it is a difficult place to develop. We were just fortunate enough that we had a property that would, that was conducive to this type of a development with having the municipal sewer system and having the, um, the close proximity to town. And we had the soils uh, to be able to, to build homes properly. Right. We're not dealing with all rock, even though there's a lot of rock on the site. We have a you know beautiful rocky outcroppings, and Robbie can tell you as you drive into this development, there's a big rock ledge on the right hand mm -hmm. side of you as you come in, and then the rest of the development is all sort of a, a nice sloping property. I noticed a, a lot of forestry, and a yeah. lot of, uh, there's a like a I don't know if it's a pond or yeah up in the back por portion of our property we have a beautiful pond, uh, a large pond that's about uh, oh maybe an acre and a half in size and uh, 14 feet deep and we've got a nice beautiful row of homes built all around that pond mm -hmm. and they face surrounded by forest surrounded by that. surrounded by uh, by by bush and rocky ledges uh, it's just a, a spectacular vistas from virtually every lot in this development wow very cool um, you had mentioned a golf course which we won't talk about too long but I, I had the privilege of jumping on the golf cart and going up behind the the houses yep. and through the forest. Yeah. And you've got a perfectly groomed path to, to go straight That's to the golf right. course. We've built a we've built a pathway uh, from the development here mm -hmm. that the residents can they if they want they can own their own golf cart. They can get in the golf cart, drive through the bush directly onto the Pinestone Golf Course. Now that's easy living, friends. Yeah. <laughs> That's rough, isn't it? Yeah, you don't even need a car if you live here. If you have a boat and a golf cart, you're covered because you can you can get in your boat and drive all the way into town. Yeah. You can boat right into the town, do your grocery shopping, get right. your supplies. Wow. It's a 10-minute boat ride. And then back, get on your golf cart, go play golf. You don't even need to have a car if you live here. Perfect. Perfect. So, Jerry, thinking of the nature of Category 5 technology TV and, and our focus generally towards technology and, and things surrounding it, what really struck me as interesting about Silver Beach and, and the reason that I called you in the first place is really what, what people may not remember that are sitting in a city, you know, the comfort of their city home or whatever, they're, they're on their high speed internet and just are able to get internet from 10 different providers and yep. just price it out and figure it out. One of the things about Halliburton and cottage country is that there was no high speed internet. That's correct. Uh, Robbie and a lot of your viewers, I'm sure, um, they're all very tech savvy and they couldn't imagine life without internet. And that was one of the key things when we were in the early developmental process was 
uh, how are we going to get people who need to be connected still to their work or that those yeah. that can work from home that want to transition into living in cottage country without high speed internet and back a few years ago um, cottage country was one of the very under underserviced areas for high speed internet so we took on the challenge and uh, I contacted countless numbers of people throughout various t different types of technology the most stable of course in, in in cottage country because line of sight is not really an option because as, as you can very see behind us hilly. it's very hilly yeah. uh, there's a lot of relief and a lot of uh, a lot of rock and, and hilly ledges so uh, hilly forested areas so it um, it's very difficult to do line of sight internet mm -hmm. the most logical was to go after uh, Bell now because Rogers, uh, there's no cable up this way. It's all satellite. So Rogers TV. being the coaxial cable TV right. based, Bell being like fiber optic DSL. DSL through right. the telephone line. So I started the uh, the trek through the minefield, if you might say, uh, with Bell. And uh, after a couple of years actually of work, I was able to connect with the correct people at the right levels in Bell and was able to convince them to come and see us. Right. to convince them to come here to Halliburton. When they got to Halliburton, they seen just what you've seen. They seen the beauty of the area. They seen the beauty of, of the, uh, the whole cottage country scene in Halliburton. But they also recognized, and I was able to show them that although Halliburton as a county has a relatively small population mm -hmm. of between 15 and 20,000, this is one of the largest cottage areas in all of Ontario. The population in Halliburton booms on weekends in the summertime and, right. and throughout the year, so upwards to around 80,000 people every weekend. From wow. 20,000. Every weekend. Every weekend. There's, there's thousands and thousands of people because, and they, and they all own land. They have cottages, they have uh, year round dwellings that they can come to. Right. So I said to, to Belle, you know, you're going to have. You're going to have all of these people who are crying for this service. Mm -hmm. and they're not even going to be here most of the time to use it. Yeah. This is a win-win situation. They're not going to use up much of your bandwidth. Mm -hmm. They're going to be here. They're going to pay for the year-round service. And that satisfies that need. 80,000 population. So they looked at it. And on the strength of our development alone, I did all the numbers as far as what their costs would be. and how long their return on their investment would take, which would be somewhat in the area of about a three-year uh, investment, three-year return on their investment after we're completed. And uh, they seen the, the, the viability of it, so they committed to come to us right. first. They said, to the development? To this development. Okay. We are going to bring high-speed internet down the road. Uh, it's only about a two-kilometer journey from their nearest terminal, which they right. could retrofit. Mm -hmm. So they, they said, we're going to bring it here. Then they, start, they continued to look, and I continued to lobby with them for the, you know, the beauty of the area. And it was, I was very fortunate to meet up with a couple of gentlemen uh, in the upper echelons of Bell who fell in love with the area. They fell in love with the town. They ended up, uh, I introduced them to the, the local council and the, and the right. reeve of the municipality, who's uh, a fabulous supporter of our development as well. And they were able to strike a deal to start expanding high-speed internet throughout Halliburton oh, yeah. County. And for the last couple of years, this has been one of their largest growth areas for high-speed internet. And virtually all of Halliburton County is now serviced with high-speed internet from Bell, all due to a little startup right. of 59 homes where they said, we see that we're underserviced and we can do something here. So now, because it was Silver Beach that basically brought Bell into Halliburton and, and this area to provide high-speed internet. How does that position you as far as, you know, your service, the quality of the service that you receive? Um, I would expect that they've run all new, probably new fiber optics. Yes, uh, a lot of the area uh, has been retooled completely. Yeah, um, like we deal in the city, just, just so you understand, like we deal with, we're dealing with old copper wiring from, you know, it might be fiber optic from one place, one node to another node, but then it's copper to the house. Right. Where you probably... Well, a lot of that is still the case here. Yeah. Um, but, but not the but old as stuff. They, but as they're putting in the newer, the new yeah. terminals, as they expand it, 
uh, they're putting in the new fiber optics, right? So we're very fortunate here. Uh, I think Robbie can attest because we're broadcasting live here from mm -hmm. Silver Beach and, and we have a pretty solid feed. Yeah, it seems great. So yeah. we've uh, got all our devices connected and yeah, we're good everything, to go. We're, we're connected yeah. and everything's working and, and uh, yes, we do have the technology at Silver Beach where people can be on the internet, they can work from home, they can be connected to the office, connected to, to the web and to their uh, their favorite uh, Category 5 TV station. Absolutely. Thanks for the plug. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure you tune in. Yeah, you'll have posters up all over the development. I can see it now. All right. Well, that's that's really cool how, how your development has really... I, I mean, I hope that people locally who, you know, they sign up for Internet, that they give you a little bit of kudos and say, well, thanks for that. <laughs> Because well, you know, dial-up is is it, it's hard to believe. I think the chat room as well is is what, no high-speed internet. Like we're talking only three years ago, there was no high-speed internet up here. That's correct. Yeah, that's unreal. Yeah, and yeah, and I remember being just a wee lad and having it introduced at my at yeah. my house. And well, it was a it was a situation where they didn't feel that there was an economical viability. Mm -hmm. And it just took somebody that was here that had the passion for the area to point it out to them that, you know, you're, you're really missing an opportunity. Right. It is here. Yep. And there are people that come here. This is a, it is a highly populated area uh, for cottagers and, and tourism. I think and, it's an interesting catch-22 because your population signs would be deceiving. That's correct. Because they're not, so they, they're not yeah. technically true. Yeah, like that. That would be your year-round. That's your year-round residents and versus how many how many people really are here. Yeah, exactly. And how many own own recreational properties and cottages, right. and how many come to the local resorts. And we're surrounded by uh, by uh, many fabulous inns and resorts all through the county. Mm. So it's uh, it's great to have uh, a good, reliable uh, supplier such as Bell, and they and they have done a wonderful job in the area. Great. Oh, that's good, and it's certainly you know it's helpful that uh, that we have access here today, uh, and thanks for that. Great, thank you. Just to uh, to touch on what's going on in technology news this week, uh, as I mentioned off the top of the show, Spotify is being sued. Uh, unfortunately, uh, they're being hit by both the U.S. and Europe for allegedly violating patents held by Packet Video. The lawsuit claims that Spotify has violated at least two patents uh, that are owned by Packet Video. Uh, that cover methods of streaming music over data networks. The legal action comes barely two weeks after Spotify launched a U.S. version of its music streaming service, and as could be expected, Spotify, of course, said that it would strongly contest the claims Packet Video made in its lawsuit. South Korea has blamed Chinese hackers for stealing data from 35 million accounts on a popular social network. The attacks were directed at uh, the SciWorld website as well as the Nate web uh, portal, uh, both run by SK Communications. Hackers are believed to have stolen phone numbers, email addresses, names, and encrypted information about the site's many millions uh, of members. Uh, so the many millions of members of this site have had their data compromised. Uh, it follows a series of recent cyber attacks directed at South Korea's government and uh, also their financial firms. Keen observers may recall that ASUS's debut of the pad phone uh, that happened back at Computex in May uh, was accompanied by another but less triumphant announcement, and that specifically uh, is that the company promised a $199 netbook computer. The Mego-based EPC X101, some of us didn't think we'd ever see it, but last week that device took several steps closer to reality. Reportedly due to begin shipping next month, the EPC X101 was first spotted early last week on several U.S. retailers' websites, as Lily Putting pointed out on Tuesday. At PC Superstore, for instance, uh, it's now available for pre-order at a price of only $199.73, while at Direct, uh, Direct Ron, it's uh, listed just a few dollars more than that at $208.98. The suspicions have been confirmed since there's also an official product page for the machine on the ASUS website and the netbook uh, turned up on the FCC exhibits list as well and uh, complete with photos and a user manual. Forensic software can exploit a seven-year-old firewire design error to snoop system memory for passwords and uh, even for de devices that are locked or in sleep mode. Updated forensics show that uh, the software can steal Apple OS X 
login passwords in minutes, even when the devices are locked or asleep. To be successful, however, users of the software, uh, it's called Passware Kit Forensics V11, uh, they must have physical access to the actual Mac device as well as a FireWire cable uh, which they would need to connect to that device. At that point, the software can capture the password data from the Mac's memory even on the latest version, this is the thing that gets us, the latest version of Apple's operating system, Mac OS X Lion. Scary stuff. These are the top stories for this week from the Category5.tv newsroom. Catch us online, www.category5.tv. And Category 5 news this week is brought to you by Planet Calypso, cat5.tv slash Calypso to download the free massive multiplayer online game. And Pogo Plug. You can find them online, cat5.tv slash Pogo Plug. It's a great device that lets me access from my iPod Touch or from your iPhone or Android device or Blackberry or whatever device you're using. Even up here in Cottage Country, you'll be able to access your files back home. Pogo Plug is cat5.tv slash Pogo Plug. Check them out. All right, so uh, Hillary uh, had the opportunity to take a look at a very awesome product from Liquid Image. Uh, you remember last week, or last year, pardon me, on our uh, cottage special, uh, we featured a Liquid Image mask that uh, allowed me to go snorkeling and actually videotape uh, the the what I was seeing under the water, which is spectacular. And I'm actually still using that mask and using it uh, this week as I'm up here in cottage country. And uh, Hillary has now uh, got the opportunity to take one motocrossing. Uh, so we're going to hear from Hillary now, and we'll be back uh, in just a few mo moments after her review. Hey everyone, I'm Hillary Rumble from Category 5 Technology TV. And maybe what you didn't know about me was that I actually used to race competitively ATVs across Ontario. Me and my family were really, really into the motorsports. We loved doing off-road, off-road adventures, going through the mud, going through trails, but we also have had some experience on the track um, racing competitively. As such, we've tried to document our adventures. We've tried the helmet cam, the big honking thing sitting on top. We've tried handheld devices going through the trails. Probably not our best idea and maybe not the safest. But what we haven't tried is this. The video goggles, the MX version, from Liquid Image. So, come along with me right now and we're going to test these out from the perspective of, of a regular user who maybe doesn't know that much about technology and also from the perspective of a former racer like myself. So, let's see how these hold up. Let's go. .mov or QuickTime file, so they have to be opened using QuickTime Player or um, 
other software that supports that. The picture save as JPEGs, and as you can see, it's pretty cool. It's easy to upload, and it's easy to see what you've done that day. The 5 megapixel camera is located right here, producing image resolutions of 2592 by 1944. The video resolution is 1280 by 720, and of course, it shoots in HD, which is awesome. Shooting at 30 frames per second, the lens is 135 degrees and provides a full field of view. The camera also has an automatic ISO as well as automatic white balance. Embedded in the mask itself is a microphone with a wind guard. All of these components together are going to produce a pretty sweet picture quality as well as awesome video. What I really appreciate about these goggles in particular is that they come with these protective films. All you do is stick them over these little knobs like so. And then it not only protects your mask, but also gives you heightened visibility. So when you're going through um, some wet terrain, perhaps some mud or dust, you don't want to use the back side of your glove to wipe it off. And then your vision becomes impaired and smeared. All you do is rip off the protective film and then you're good to go. So I have my mask, but how do I turn on the camera? Well, it's pretty easy. When you're wearing the mask like this, there's two buttons right here. This bottom button turns on the camera. As you can see, there's a blue light. That indicates it's on the video mode setting. To switch it, all you gotta do is tap it once, and it goes red. Red means it's on camera setting, so it can take some still images. To start or stop a recording, or to take a still picture, you push this top button. I just took a picture of my videographer. Pretty cool, huh? To turn it off, all you gotta do is hold the bottom button again until you hear a beep. Pretty easy stuff. Now to charge this, well, that's another story. Open this side compartment, flip it open, and get your USB port, plug it in, and it charges based on the power coming from your computer. But let's say you're on the road, you're, you're going to a circuit race, or you're going to a new location for some riding, you need a wall outlet or perhaps a car adapter. That's no big deal. You can purchase one of those for pretty cheap and just use the end of the USB that you would plug into the computer to stick into a wall outlet or the car adapter. Pretty cool. So you can take this anywhere and always find some sort of way to plug it in and charge it up so you're ready to go. Located in this compartment right here is the lithium battery, which has a battery life of two hours. So you don't need to worry about your camera conking out when you're riding the dusty trail. The thing about my Liquid Image Video Camera MX goggles is, I like to wear them everywhere. I could really go for a snack. Huh. I even wear my goggles when I'm hanging out with my friends or at work. Here they are. They're hard at work, as you can see. Yes, it is. I wear them when I'm following nature. Shirley, may I take your order, please? Hi, can I have one medium decaf with cream and half a sugar? And a regular medium. Uh, medium regular? Yep, with okay. cream and half a sugar. Cream and a half a sugar, okay. Yep, and a large chocolate milk, please. We only have small chocolate milk here, hon. A small chocolate milk, okay, please. Okay, is that everything? That's it, thanks. 415 drive on up. Thank you. <laughs> here we <laughs> Oh, your girl. Thank crazy, you. Crazy, crazy kids. <laughs> Do you hear that? Crazy kids. They call me crazy. I don't believe it. Hey, Thank you. Okay. Thank there you. you. Go, Have a good day. You too. Bye bye. I really do wear them everywhere. Now, how do I get out? Ability and usability of a former former racer like myself and connoisseur of motorsports, it's quite possible that I am in love.
This is fabulous. It's a great device. The goggles feel like normal goggles. The only difference is there's slight visibility loss in the um, peripheries compared to other goggles, but they are still fabulous. And for, for the purpose of wearing them, and that is to document your experience, I say they are terrific. And the award for best performance video quality and overall awesomeness in an MX and off-road way is my liquid image video camera MX goggles. Congratulations. This is Category 5 Technology TV, and you'll find us online, www.category5.tv. So nice to have you here with us tonight. Uh, I do encourage you to check out their website. It's liquidimagecanada.com. Uh, I've got a question from uh, dman810, who joins us in the chat room, and I would ask uh, that you PM me uh, when you have a question in the chat room. just makes things easier when I don't have the demo system. Uh, dman810 was, uh, was good to do that, and uh, wonders if there's a model of the goggles from Liquid Image that are specifically for mountain biking. And what I've done here, D-Man, is I brought up their website, is liquidimagecanada.com. And you'll see on the right-hand side, there are uh, masks for water sports, off-road sports, snow sports, and they even have some more stuff coming, such as motor sports and surf sports, which is pretty awesome. Uh, if you click on off-road sports, you're going to see that those are the uh, the masks that Hillary is reviewing. And uh, that, of course, is is you know, it's going to work really well on either motocross or uh, if you're going to be doing mountain biking. I think that there are a lot of features of that mask that uh, that make it great for uh, for serious off-road mountain biking because of the fact that it has some safety features like the removable film, uh, but also um, it'll fit over your helmet. So uh, one of the nice things about that mask is it's designed to actually fit over the helmet without being pulled out from the side of your face. So uh, So you want to check that out. They do. Uh, they are available in the uh, in the United States, um, but I would encourage you uh, because Liquid Image Canada is a dot com is a Canadian supplier. I would encourage you to email them off of their website. Get onto liquidimagecanada.com and post your inquiries. Just let them know that you heard of them on Category Five TV. Uh, that's much appreciated. Of course, I encourage you to to always let uh, our sponsors and and supporters uh, know that you heard of them through the show, so that they know that uh, that uh, they're um, directing uh, attention through us and and having you know doing things like a uh, promo like that through Category Five is is beneficial to them. Um, so please do uh, PM me your questions. That's a private message uh, in our chat room, Category Five TV on Freenode. It's Category Five. Scorpio Fifty Five wants to know: uh, Have you demonstrated Linux to our guest, and what does he think of it? Have you ever used Linux? I have not. You have not? You're no. familiar with it? I have, yes. I've okay. heard of Linux. There you go. I have not demonstrated it. Uh, I don't have a demo system here tonight. Uh, basically, take uh, your Mac and my PC, kind of mishmash them together, destroy them, build them up again, and make them more awesome. And that's Linux. That sounds perfect, then. It's really, really good. If you can improve on a Mac, in my world, that's great. Because <laughs> I've been a Mac, uh, Mac aficionado for did you hear years. that i've been a mac like they they brainwashed I, you dude well you know i i used to be in the graphics business i i, okay. I was at one point uh, very technologically savvy uh, unfortunately when you start uh digging into dirt and building houses you sort of lose a wee bit of that edge so but you're still uh, faithful, but to, your still faithful to my mac i still do all my own marketing my own design work mm -hmm. so uh very cool. all my own creative yeah. uh you've worked with some of it mm -hmm. and uh I still I still love my Mac so Linux is a is a free distribution that you can get for your PC hardware there are versions that will work on some of the the Mac hardware as well uh, my particular favorite distribution is is bait is something called Ubuntu and it runs on only PC hardware but you can get a, a cheap laptop like I've got and put Linux on it and it basically takes it and makes it more customizable it makes it uh, usually in a lot of cases a lot faster than it would be with the windows that came with the system it sounds perfect it's it's really quite good yeah, it sounds so great I'd encourage people to check that out uh, I'll post a show uh, link in the show notes 
uh, of Category 5, but it's ubuntu.com, U-B-U-N-T-U.com. That's one distribution, but of course on our website you'll see that we're also reviewing many different types of Linux uh, because there are various flavors. Jot suggests that I would explain to you how to PM in the chat room when Jot could just go in the chat room and say, hey, here's how you PM. What you do is you type slash msg, which is the IRC command for private message, so slash msg space Robbie F, because that's my handle, that's my name in the chat room, and then space, and then your little message, just to bring up a, like your question, for example. So slash msg space Robbie F space your question. And then hit enter, and it will, uh, it will post directly to my screen. Thanks, John. Robbie, I see in the chat room, we do, I do have lots of support. I'm not the only Mac. Uh, Mac user out there. Mac rules. Lots of good Mac <laughs> comments here. Keep them coming, folks. If this were uh, pre-Krista days, <laughs> it might it might be a little bit different. But I think uh, times are a change in a little bit. But we're we're working on censoring the show a little bit, and <laughs> making sure that Max. You'll notice that uh, in the shot, the uh, I, I said to Jerry, well, we we just don't want the your your you know pretty much to be hiding out behind a laptop. So just kind of move it over there. You just didn't want that logo showing. Just didn't want that logo showing. <laughs> truth be told. Truth be told. Um, Agamotto would like to know, uh, we were talking about the internet that you were able to successfully um, solicit Bell to bring into the yeah. area here in Halliburton. What is the, do you, do you know the technical uh, specs as far I, as speed goes? I believe goes? it's a five, uh, five megabyte connection here. Like five meg. So standard DSL, yeah. good quality good service, quality. good high speed, yeah. which is pretty exceptional considering it wasn't here. Considering so, it came from good. nothing, yeah. Thanks for the question, Agamotto. I got your message there, Chris Reich. I am telling the truth. <laughs> Fantastic. Any other questions before we move on? I would like to uh, check out Twitter here and just uh, see if anyone has sent me a question on Twitter. Andrew Jameson, at Andrew Jameson, writes to at Robbie Ferguson, and he says, Robbie, what is the difference uh, between eco-alkaline uh, versus a non-eco-friendly battery? Uh, and that's that's product specific to to the batteries that uh, that we these are the official batteries of Category Five. Um, eco alkaline batteries are certified by CarbonFund.org, which means that they are carbon neutral. Um, just off the top of my head, but I'll tell you, go to their website. It's EcoAlkalines.com, and that's plural. It has zero percent cadmium, lead, and mercury. And you'll find with batteries, a lot of times, it's when they say that it's mercury free or something, it's actually not necessarily true. It might be like 0.001% or you know, it might be something silly like that. These are actually mercury, cadmium, and lead free uh, to the point where they are considered, as I was mentioning earlier in the show, they're earth friendly and landfill safe. Personally, I still send them to e-waste because I like to know that the metals, even though they're not um, rare metals, I like to know that those are being recycled. Uh, that's important to me. Um, but Good to know that in the manufacturing process of these batteries, that they are carbon neutral. Uh, so do check out their website, ecoalkalines.com. I'd encourage you to do so. And again, I, I mentioned it a little bit earlier uh, on their tag, but they are available around the world. But if they're not, if you can't find them in a store because they are relatively new as far as a product goes, um, you can actually get onto their website. It's ecoalkalines.com. Send them a message and say, uh, where can I get these in? the UK or where can I get these in wherever it is that you are okay thanks for the question uh, a couple more questions that are coming in here let's give you a chance Scorpio 55 is suggesting that we look at Mac for Lin on SourceForge and show that to uh, to Jerry and I'd be happy to I'll I'll send you some videos to to take a look at how's that sounds good you can watch it on your high-speed uh, internet uh, Agamotto wondering if the batteries are ROHS. Is that what you mean with regards to the batteries? And I'm not too I'm not too sure on that. I, again, I would encourage you to get onto their website. I all I have to look at is uh, the packaging as well as um, the information that I know about the product itself. Um, so check them out, okay? I would encourage you to do that. All right. Just checking the chat room here for your questions. Any more private messages? I've got one more tweet that's coming here. You can uh, send me a Twitter. You'll see my Twitter handle down there. 
at Robbie Ferguson if you'd like to send me a, uh, a tweet. And that comes straight to me. K Goosey on Twitter says, what video capture device do you use for the Category 5 TV broadcast? Thanks for the question. Uh, now tonight we're a little bit, things are very different because tonight we're actually resorting to um, what we would consider older technology because we need a, a mobile rig. So we're using a laptop with a Firewire, a PCMCIA card or, or PC card, and that's going to a, a consumer cam through Firewire. Uh, SD. So that's a little bit different, whereas under normal conditions when we're working in the studio, we're using what's called a Blackmagic Intensity Pro card, and that's a PCI Express X1 card, which can go into any of the PCI Express slots all the way up to X16, and uh, that card gives you not just the analog inputs, but also what's amazing about it is that it gives you HDMI full uncompressed 1080p input through the HDMI port. So if you've got an HDMI output on a camera or an HDMI output on a computer or whatever you want to do, it goes straight into the Blackmagic Intensity Pro and gives you uncompressed full 1080p uh, quality video. So it's a fantastic card. It's dirt cheap. I can't believe how cheap it is. They're under 200 bucks and you can pick them up uh, through one of our uh, supporters, cat5.tv slash bh. They're uh, called B&H Photo Video. Uh, so go to cat5.tv slash bhkgoosey, and that will uh, take you to the website and do a search for Intensity Pro. Okay, so that's all the time we have for questions tonight. There is one other technology at Silver Beach that is not just, it's not, it doesn't just make me go, oh, that's smart, that makes sense, but it's actually gotten you recognition across the province, yes, at the has. very least. Yes. <clears throat> yes, Robbie, this is, hopefully your viewers will find this a little more a little more technically advanced than the internet, which they're already familiar with. I, I think that quite often there are technologies that transcend, you know, sitting at a computer, but are related to our day-to-day -day life. Exactly. Uh, we have a technology that we employ here as a standard feature in our homes at Silver Beach. Now, uh, it, it all relates to heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. We've uh, we've got a company here in Canada that has developed a true zone zone control system. And what this system is, is it's a system using an air handler and a combination, in combination with a condensing boiler. So we actually heat these homes. This home that we're in here now is 3,400 square feet in size. Wow. It's heated with eight tenths of a gallon of water. What? We can heat this house with eight tenths of a gallon in a closed loop system. We heat the hot water in a boiler. We circulate it through an air handler. You know, in this air handler, this is a very technologically advanced piece of equipment. It has a computerized dampering system and it has a computer on board that recognizes all the calls from various areas of the house. So each level of the home is independently controlled. The duct system in traditional house building, we're still doing duct systems like we did in 1960. We've right. now brought that into the 2000s by doing a zone system. So we actually have three duct systems within all of our homes one for each level of the house. If it's a bungalow, we can actually split the main floor and have bedrooms and bathrooms at one temperature, main living, dining, kitchen areas at another temperature, all by use wow. of a computerized air handler that reads the call from each thermostat, opens and closes the dampers as required, and then there's a DC modulating motor, which the modulation or, and the airflow is controlled by the computer reading the call from what area of the house is requiring uh, heating or cooling. So the to dampers, dumb it down for myself, if I'm following you right. Dumb it down, come on, you guys are so yeah, technologically no, to, advanced. So, so that I can understand. Here. So at, at my place, for example, we have the studio in the basement, we've got our main floor, and then the bedroom floor. So let and, me tell you what happens in your house. In well, the, when the show is going on, we've got the lights on, so of course we've got the air conditioner cranked. My poor wife is upstairs shivering. Yep. So what? So if I follow you, this system allows for... Each level is independently controlled of the others. Right. So what normally happens in a house in, let's talk about the air conditioning season, it's very difficult to push cold air from the basement, from, from the furnace or from where the con compressor yeah. condensing unit is, up to the upper levels of the house. So consequently, your upper levels are always hot. Right. It's very, very difficult to get the bedroom areas mm -hmm. up in the second level of a house cooled down. 
while at the same time you freeze out the basement and the main level just trying to get air or you're running around stuffing towels or socks into the right the, covering the vents ducts, and covering yeah. up the vents closing because if you close them to, they don't really think, stay you closed you think that you force seems... the air where you want it to yeah. go by not letting it out all you do is create more air loss more air leakage right. with our systems each level of the home has its own thermostat so right now if i went upstairs into the loft i can set that at 24 degrees that area will stay at 24 degrees I can set this at 28 degrees overnight because I'm not living here. If I'm sleeping upstairs in the bedroom, right. I can have the main level drift up during the day. So the basement, cost the basement savings. never basement zone never goes on for air conditioning, and it works the opposite right. for heating. And with the use of all of the uh, the programmable thermostats that we have, which are very advanced systems, you can control the, every step of the day where you are in what area of the house, and. Mm -hmm completely control your environment around you so you can let the temperatures drift when you're not around in the daytime and then at say at eight o'clock at night you're going to get ready to go to bed at 10 you can ha you can let the temperature drift up to 28 degrees during the day at eight o'clock you can bring it down to 28 degrees just in those bedroom areas only so you can save you can save up to 30 percent on air conditioning up to eight to ten percent wow. on your heating costs using this type of a system but it isn't just the heating and it isn't just the the energy saving or the uh, the cost saving. This is one of the newer green technologies that actually enhances your living because normally as you know with any kind of green technology you have an electric car you sacrifice power and, and duration of, of usage. Uh, right. There's always a sacrifice with most green technologies. This is one of the few green technologies that does not have a sacrifice to it at all. It has a benefit to your lifestyle and as a result of that Natural Resources Canada has made this one of their initiatives to present through what they call their LEAP program, mm -hmm. L-E-E-P, Local Energy Efficiency Programs. And uh, they have asked me to join them and to make presentations, prepare right. a presentation. So I've been hired by Natural Resources Canada to present to other builders throughout the province of Ontario wow. in introducing this new type of zoning and air handling possibilities for heating and cooling. No doubt in hopes that other developments would take yeah. up, follow yeah. suit. Some other developers I've heard, uh, I've heard there's been some great response and, and uh, that some other developers have already started to uh, introduce this type of technology into their new homes as well, uh, which is great for the province, it's great for the, the home buyers, it's, it's just a wonderful comfortable technology and it, and it is very technologically advanced as far as the, the onboard computers that because they, these air handlers are even able to detect time if a, if a zone has been, been putting air into a zone for a period of 15 minutes and the zone still hasn't been satisfied, it hasn't turned off yet, yeah. it'll actually speed up, the motor will speed up and put more air into that zone. So is that why it's so quiet? Because it's... You never hear it. Yeah, you just never hear it. Because it's just running at that nice it, optimum it runs speed. At, and... It runs at the speed that's required to get the airflow that's been yeah. designed into the technology into the area that you want. So it stays always comfortable, the whole house is, is is always temperate and the beauty of the whole system as well is when all zones are satisfied all dampers open and the motor modulates down to about four percent of its capacity so you always have a nice comfortable airflow and you don't even feel it you don't hear wow. it you don't even know it but you're always moving air within the house so the whole house always stays comfortable without cold right. spots and we can we can understand that because we've got on our on our CPUs quite often our computers will have um, uh, like Q fan technology or whatever that, that clocks down the fan if the, yep. if the temperature is regulated at a good temperature and but it still maintains that coolness. So we're now bringing that type of technology, that type of yeah, that fan technology That's outstanding. into home building. And it's so comfortable in here. It really is comfortable. I, I wish you could be sitting in here with us. It's just absolutely gorgeous. Uh, the houses look magnificent. You've done a, a wonderful job Thank and you. it's it's neat to see that you're you're pushing these technologies that are designed to be eco-friendly and and not only that but I think I think in in my eyes at least if I was buying right now I would think well these the, these developers really care about the comfort of my lifestyle you're not just building homes and putting up cookie cutter homes you're you're building uh, homes that are built to be lived in comfortably we're, we're building homes that I would live in myself and, and right. as a matter of fact I do live in this development I live right here at Silver Beach. You're a lucky guy so thank you. Lucky guy. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for your time, uh, chat room. It's been fun. I hope you've enjoyed yourself tonight. Uh, lo lots of fun being here uh, at Silver Beach Developments in Halliburton. 
Um, I do agree with Chris Reich that it seems to be a little bit like star, like the Starship Enterprise, as far as climate control and that little low hum when the fans come on. That's that's our our geekdom just kind of showing through. It's all good. Um, the zone, Chris Reich, as as was being said, there is computer controlled. Um, very, very cool stuff. All right. Well, we're right out of time, everybody. Thank you so much. Get your questions in this week live at Category5.tv. I'll be back to the studio this, uh, this coming week and looking forward to, uh, to presenting the show for you from there. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's been fun. And thank you so much, right. Robbie, for thank having you. me here. Thank you, and thank you to uh, all of your viewers as well for allowing me a chance to show some of our technologies and our uh, home-building technologies and our beautiful area of Halliburton as well. And of course, if you'd like more information about Silver Beach Developments, uh, give Jerry a call. Uh, your phone number local, locally here? 705-457-1429. There you go. And his website is silverbeachdevelopments.com. Please do check it out. Find out more about, uh, about the development, the beautiful homes that are here, and, uh, and find out more about the community of Halliburton. Uh, if you're looking to buy a home, this is uh, just an exceptional uh, town. Uh, we've really loved our stay here so far. And, and uh, just a pleasure to be uh, here in Halliburton. And, and these are beautiful. So thank you, Rob. Well done. Thanks, everybody. Have a great week. And we will uh, we'll see you next Tuesday night at the same time, 7 o'clock. And uh, again, I'll be back in the studio. So we'll talk to you then. Take care. Good night, everyone.